This is the story of Barry in Blunderland. Chapter One, Dr. Cab, in which Barry embarks on an extraordinary adventure during evening service. The evening sunlight streamed through the west window of the church and Barry, there he is, sitting sandwiched between his mum and dad watched the dust particles dance in the beam. It shone right onto the screen for the data projection. One of the deacons got up and pulled a blind across and that was the end of that game. Barry liked coming to the evening service. He was eight years old and his sisters were much older than him. They were allowed to sit in a row of the cool young people at the side of the church. After the service, he was allowed to hang out with them over orange squash and biscuits. But during the service, he had to sit with his mum and dad, supplied with a paper and pencil, so that he could take notes during the sermon. So far on his piece of paper, he'd written the title of the sermon, The Five Points of Calvinism, and he had underlined the title with a straight line, and then a wavy line, and then he had shaded the bits in between. Then he had drawn a bunch of keys, because he thought the pastor had said something about these truths being the keys to understanding the gospel. Anyway, he'd drawn a big thick ring and five keys on it of different sizes and shapes. But he had lost the thread of the sermon somehow, and his left leg inside his sock was really itching. Risking a sharp poke in the ribs from either mum or dad, Barry bent down and pushed down his sock. Hmm, no wonder it was itching. There was an ant in there. Barry got the ant onto his finger. It was about to scurry up his arm to his armpit, so Barry transferred it to the other finger. And then Barry's mum gave him a gentle nudge, accompanied by a frown. Barry leant down and flicked the ant onto the floor. It ran round madly, up and down. Barry watched in fascination, his elbows on his knees, his head down. The ant found the gap between the blocks in the parquet flooring and disappeared down a crack. And Barry was vastly disappointed but he kept his eyes fixed on the crack because he thought perhaps the ant, who he now looked on as his friend, might just pop out again. As Barry stared at the crack in the floor, his piece of paper fell off his lap. Reaching down to pick it up, something strange began to happen to Barry. He found himself stretching and flattening out and then in a peculiar way sliding and slithering down between the floor blocks. Down and down he went, not feeling pain or fear or that it was in any way a tight fit, just oddly flat and upside down. He tumbled head over heels finally onto a dusty floor. It was pretty dark down but lifting his head, Barry could make out a light in the distance. Barry thought he would get up and walk towards the light, but every time he tried to do that, he rolled himself up like a carpet. He tried this way and that, but it was no good. His head ended up looking at his chest. He had become somehow extremely he was just beginning to feel a little bit distressed when he heard a voice behind him. Do you need some help, flat boy? You seem quite insubstantial to me. As Barry's eyes adjusted to the dark, he could make out the shape of the speaker who now appeared in front of him. The voice wasn't unfriendly, here he is. But the shape 
can only be described as ant shape. But like an ant on his back legs, a somewhat oversized ant with four arms waggling and waving in front of him. One of the hands held a clipboard. The ant wore glasses, a white coat, and had a stethoscope around his neck. He frowned at Barry. I'm afraid you have a very bad case of insubstantialitis, he said. There's Barry. I'm not insubstantial, protested Barry. I just slid through the floor. Who are you? The ant bowed. My name? is Dr. Cow. And I think I recognise your socks. What have you got in your hand? And Barry saw that he still had in his hand the piece of paper, the one with the picture of the five keys. Goodness me now, said the doctor. And his face spread into a broad grin. And his head waggled up and down with glee. Now isn't that handy? You've got the five keys. Is that a good thing, said Barry, looking at the crumpled drawing in his hand. Where am I? You're in Blunderland, my friend, said Dr. Cow, and I'm the doctor here. But hang on to those keys. They'll get you out into the light. I don't think I'm going anywhere flattened like this, said Barry. Yes, your flatness is a sad fact, said Dr. Cow, but I can help you with that. I'm going to inflate you, starting at the bottom. I'll just peg this line to your big toe. No need to take your trainers off. We don't need that kind of smell down here, thank you. How rude, said Barry. But what are you doing to me? What is this? Is this going to hurt? Not at all, said Dr. Cow. You won't feel a thing. And before Barry could utter further protest or even roll out of the way, Dr. Cal had pegged something to his toe and Barry felt as if he was being filled out. Uh, I should have said something about a side effect of this treatment, said Dr. Cal. Side effect? said Barry, what side effect? Well, this treatment will deal with the flatness, but it will, um, how can I say it, shrink you. What do you mean, said Barry, wide-eyed. Well, you'll be rather small, but the good news is <laughs> you won't be flat. How small is rather small? Small enough to use the smallest key on your key ring there. You need to be small. It's a small door you've got to go through. See down there by that light at the end of the corridor? But it's only a paper key ring, began Barry, and then he looked at his hands. They were pink and round again, and in one of them was the bunch of keys he had drawn. Actual keys. Five metal keys on a key ring small and then bigger and bigger again and so on and Barry staring at the keys found that he could now get to his feet but he had certainly shrunk well there we are said Dr Cal beaming a successful treatment I think we can say that but I'm afraid you can't stay here I have other patients to see you must leave the small door and he pointed down there by the light off you toddle and when you get through that door you will meet Sergeant Major Totes. And so Barry, much diminished, made his way down the dark corridor towards the light. And Dr. Cow was shouting after him. Don't forget about the keys. Dr. Cow reminds us of a very great Bible teacher called John Calvin, who lived in the 16th century. He studied the Bible and wrote a great deal about it at a time when a lot of people were just beginning to discover what the Bible actually said. The term Calvinism is shorthand 
for biblical Christianity. Calvin's five points, as they're called, which we shall look at one by one, are a neat way of summarising some key truths about how God works in saving us. We can think of them as five keys to understanding the way back to God. And just as Barry found himself to be very flat after he slid through the floor and needed Dr. Cow to inflate him, so the truths of which Calvin wrote can fill out our understanding of how great God is and how breathtakingly wonderful is his love for us. There are truths, aren't there, which can make us feel quite small. And trust me, that is no bad thing. Look at what David said once. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you have set in place, what is man that you are mindful of him? the son of man, that you care for him. 